All right, let's talk tennis. Uh, Novak Djokovic collected his second consecutive Grand Slam title with last night's straight set victory against Juan Martin Del Potro. But the high drama, and it was high drama, came a day before in the women's final that saw Japan's Naomi Osaka crowned champion following a controversial victory over Serena Williams. After dropping the first set to Osaka, the trouble for Williams began early in the second set when the umpire, the chair ump, Carlos Ramos, gave Williams a warning for a code violation for receiving coaching, which is not allowed during Grand Slam matches. If he gives me a thumbs up, he's telling me to come on. We don't have any code, and I know you don't know that, and I understand why you may have thought I would have coaching, but I'm telling you it's not. I don't cheat too many, I'd rather lose. I'm just letting you know. After losing a crucial game, Williams destroys her racket by slamming it onto the court, a second code violation that automatically costs her a point. And when Serena realizes the next game would start with Osaka ahead 15 love, she voices her displeasure with the um. I didn't get coaching. I didn't get coaching. You need to take, you need to make an announcement that I didn't get coaching. I don't cheat. I didn't get coaching. How can you say that? So this went on for quite some time, and Williams' coach later actually admitted to coaching from the stands, adding that all coaches do it. Still fuming after Osaka goes on to score a break point, Williams has more words for Ramos, accusing the umpire of stealing a point from her. Yeah. <laughs> Serena was watching her coach give her a hand signal. And now I'm going to do Mrs. Williams. Are you kidding me? That's like saying you're a thief. Because you stole a point from me. But I'm not a cheater. But why would you I told you to apologize to me? This is, this is how, excuse me, I didn't remember. I said a simple thing, a thief because you stole a point from me. It does not make, does throw men out here that do my parts because I'm a woman. The words cost Williams a game penalty, and Osaka went on to win in straight sets, becoming the first Japanese player to take home a major singles title. The circumstances made for a tearful trophy ceremony in front of a pro Serena crowd. I know that everyone was cheering for her, and I'm sorry it had to end like this. Um... to play Serena in the U.S. Open Finals. Um, so I'm really glad that I was able to do that. And I'm really grateful I was able to play with you. Um, thank you. I'm here fighting for women's rights and for women's equality and for all kinds of stuff. And for me to say thief and for him to take a game, it made me feel like it was a sexist remark. In a post-match news conference, Williams accused umpire Carlos Ramos of sexism. The events drew criticism from the legendary Billie Jean King, a pioneer in women's rights and sports, who in an op-ed for the Washington Post highlights a double standard faced by Williams and writes that Osaka's stellar play was overshadowed by an archaic tennis rule that eventually led to an abuse of power. Joining us now, MSNBC contributor Mike Lupica. So, um, so wow. Mike, um, listen, we, we, so we've heard from Billie Jean King. Uh, we heard from Chris Everett yesterday. We heard from none other than the racket break, every tennis racket's worst nightmare, John McEnroe. And they all seem to say a couple of the same things. One, Osaka outplayed her. She, she Big was, time. She was easily the best player on the court that day. Two, Serena violated the rules. She clearly violated the rules for which she was penalized. But three, that the chair up uh, completely misplayed the situation and overreacted. What do you think? 
Joe, I, I have celebrated Serena's journey and Venus's journey for, for 20 years since they first came on stage. I was watching Serena and writing about her at Wimbledon this year. It's a great American story. But she was out of line the other day. And, and she did break the rules. And once she broke that racket, she had to know the rules well enough to know that the next thing she did was going to take a game away from her. Uh, Mary Carrillo is the smartest commentator there is about tennis. And she said afterwards that when you call the umpire a liar and a thief, you break your racket in anger. And then you accuse them of sexism afterwards. And then you say you're doing this for all women. No. She said, no thanks, she acted on her own. And Joe, here's the thing about Serena. There's been a lot of talk about McEnroe and Connors, and I saw all of that, okay? But Serena has priors at this event. In 2009, in the semifinals, she threatened to stuff a blanket ball down a Lions woman's blanket throat when she didn't like a football call and ended up getting defaulted out of the match because of a point penalty. Two years later, in the final against Sam Stozer, she says to the umpire, a woman, Did you, are you the one who screwed me last time? Because if I ever see you walking down the street, stay on the other side. So that has to provide some context here. And, and the greater context is she was going to lose this match. And, and she wouldn't let this go on, on the coaching. And, and once she got that penalty for breaking the racket, she had to know what she was staring at, and she still couldn't stop talking to the guy. You know, it's important, Mika, and, and athletes, male athletes, female athletes get frustrated. McEnroe, of course, who would most famously would get, uh, you know, Natasi would get uh, upset. But, but, but McEnroe said there was some, quote, fake news out there saying that he'd never been penalized for his behavior. He had also, a lot of the codes, a lot of the standards were changed to stop the sort of verbal abuse that John McEnroe heaped on, on umps because he recounted how his father said, as long as you don't swear, as long as you don't use vulgarities, you can get away with just about anything. That's not the case anymore. You know, I think Serena is feeling like she's carrying a lot of responsibility uh, as a woman in tennis, as an African-American woman, and I, I applaud all the, the ground that she is breaking. Um, having said that, there's just a few things that you have to go through when you watch what played out because it is important and there's some incredible gender conversations that we can have out of it. Bottom line, she was being coached and her coach even admits to it. Um, Complicated. If you listen to John McEnroe or Chris Everett, they'll say the umpire might have overplayed his hand a little bit and fa failed perhaps to give her some soft warnings along the way that could have mitigated things from bubbling up. But she was being coached and she also did throw the racket. Personally, I don't think that's becoming whether a man does it or a woman does it. And apparently it's against the rules and she threw it, so it happened. And then for me, the biggest thing, especially given uh, sort of the conversations I have with women about knowing their value and communicating effectively, one of the big know your value rules is don't take it personally. And the entire thing that played out on the court was extremely personal. Uh, it was about Serena. It was about being apologized to, and it became, it just completely blew out of control and quite frankly impacted her tennis, you could argue, but even more so took away from what was really happening. The winner was amazing, and she won. And, and really what should have happened for her was taken away by Serena, incapable of not taking this all personally and taking it all in. She is such a huge platform, Mike Lubica, that she could have waited. And she could have talked about these things on the big stage, so to speak, and really had some good uh, conversations, debates even about whether the data shows that women perhaps are, are treated unfairly or differently because of the rules, but instead she brought it onto the court. Mika, I, as I watched it play out in real time and, and, and heard everybody say afterwards, well, they both lost because of what happened, she riled that crowd up and, 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 and she was very gracious afterwards, but her behavior which could, could have cost Osaka a match that she was clearly winning and clearly wasn't going to lose. And, and so, so much of this was self-inflicted the other day. Mika, you're absolutely right. She wouldn't drop this. She couldn't get past it, and it ended up costing her what might be her last best chance to win the U.S. Open. Well, Mike, the, the thing that 
Serena was most insulted by, that she kept repeating over and over again is, I don't cheat. He wasn't coaching me. And this, she, this was the refrain. She kept going back to it over and over. I've got a daughter. I would never do this. I've never cheated in my life. I've never. Well, and immediately afterward, her coach said, yeah, I was coaching her. But at the same time, all the coaches, as you know, they all coach their players on the court. And I'm wondering why it was, first of all, so arbitrary in this case. And secondly, yeah. don't guys like you and me always say when we're watching a game, I know I say it a, a good bit watching soccer, sometimes watching football, to the umpire or to the ref, hey, this isn't about you, buddy. Get out of the way. Let the players play, especially in the finals of a U.S. Open with historic ramifications. Shouldn't that chair umpire just call the rover and say, hey, listen, I know everybody does it, but we're in a final. You need to let your coach know he needs to be a little smarter, okay? Because the cameras are everywhere. We can see him doing it. He, he can't coach you. And, and then when she started yelling, call her over and say, hey, listen, if you keep this up, I got no choice. I'm going to have to cite you for verbal abuse. I don't want to do that. Just get out there, play the game. We'll talk about it after. Like, couldn't, couldn't, Soft warnings. couldn't a chair umpire that was a little, had a little lighter of touch done that and not made the open about him? Yeah, Joe, I think he could have had a lighter touch, but I think that if he had even suggested it, she still would have been insulted that he thought her coach was coaching her. And she kept denying it, and then her coach afterwards said they did it. I agree with Billie Jean. I think it's a stupid rule. I think it's an antiquated rule, and they ought to change it. I don't see a guy a guy going like this in, in, in the stands <laughs> is, 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 is some violation of tennis code or ethics. But the fact is this guy is a stickler from the rule. But this thing escalated after she broke her racket. And she didn't break her yeah. racket because of the coaching thing. She, but she had led Osaka back into the second set. She had just played a dreadful game. And again, that's why I keep saying... Most of these wounds were self-inflicted, and it's not like we haven't seen this from her at the Open before in big moments. Yeah.